and now uh, we're going to move to uh, our next speaker, uh, who is uh, Fliss Star Eggers, and uh, Star Egger, beg your pardon, and Fliss uh, is the head of languages at uh, University, uh, I beg your pardon, Imperial College London, uh, teaches German there, and is going to talk today about the impact of the year abroad on language students. So Fliss, if you are there, could you share your, uh, uh, open your camera and uh, share your slides? Are you with us uh, in the Zoom room, Fliss? And if you could say something that would help us know that you're there. Hello, I hope you can hear me. Um, unfortunately, I can't start the video myself. Uh, so <laughs> we can hear we can hear you. Uh, so um, and do do you have slides to share? I certainly do have slides to share. Yes. Um, so I will share my screen now. Um, I think once I've uh, started the uh, PowerPoint presentation, I won't be able to see any um, Comments. signals or signs anymore. Right, so if, right. if, if, this, if it doesn't work, then please do shout at me. Um, so I'm going to share my screen now. Right. Uh, OK. And uh, so I don't think you can see it yet. It's maybe on its way. Is it working? Yeah, you might need to highlight the screen that you want to share. Uh, ah, I yes, there, there it is. Yes, we can see it. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So over to you, Fliz. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, and a good afternoon uh, from Austria. Uh, and thank you very much for, for giving me the opportunity to uh, give my short presentation here. Now, um, the topic is a very specific one and uh, is about university level. And uh, we are, uh, I'm going to uh, focus on undergraduates. And uh, the title is Out of Your Comfort Zone, uh, which is a quote from one of the students uh, we interviewed. Uh, so let me just uh, move on to, to a quick overview. Um, so I'm going to say something a little bit about how I actually found the data, then what language opportunities do we offer at the Imperial College London, then what are the rationales behind uh, the way we teach and what we teach, and then uh, the all important student feedback, uh, which is really a snapshot only, but uh, it does provide a very important um, and valuable insight into how students um, feel about uh, their year abroad uh, and uh, also to a certain extent the preparation. I'll give a short summary. Then, uh, so what is, what, what uh, I decided to repurpose existing material now, my, my colleague, Dr. Sheila Lecoeur, um, following a, um, a suggestion from uh, my uh, colleague, Dr. Iria gonzalez Becerra, who I believe is on the call, uh, <laughs> said, why don't we uh, make a video to uh, interview the students who are on year abroad? And we did. Uh, so it was returning students and staff uh, departmental year abroad coordinators in particular, uh, whom we then interviewed. Um, the funding came from the international office um, and staff support. So Dr. Shilin Kerr uh, and a, a video expert uh, actually put together the uh, clips. And um, these were collected at several events uh, over several years. Um, the students had gone to several destinations and, of course, covered several disciplines. Um, so that is what we had. And I thought, well, why don't I listen to uh, what the students actually said again uh, and distill some of their experiences? But we, before we go on to that, let me just give you a brief overview of what we actually do. 
what do we do at Imperial College London? Um, we at the Centre for Languages, Culture and Communication offer an institution-wide programme called Horizons, which is generic and it's an integrated course. We also offer the year abroad uh, specialist um, classes, uh, and those are for French, German, Spanish and Italian only. Now, a year abroad option is offered by all departments apart from uh, Dyson School of Design. Uh, we then have a flagship uh, degree program, which is a with degree, so a named language and the title that is uh, available for French, German and Spanish. Um, and it's called, for example, biochemistry with Spanish. We also have summer extension courses and we have the personalized language pairs. So what is the year abroad, which is actually where the, the whole idea of the student interviews came from? Uh, that's only one hour, once a week, over 19 weeks. Uh, it runs levels two to six. Uh, level two is post GCSE, and level six is effectively C1, C2, and the common European framework. Uh, GCSE is the entry requirement. Uh, and what do we do in class? So we have um, lots of different students from different disciplines, and we do have to tailor it to a certain extent. So. It's the scope then covers reading comprehension, listening comprehension, summaries, puzzles, info gap, a little bit of translation. We also do discussions, note taking, which is particularly important for the students who uh, go on residence abroad. Then students do presentations because this is an assessed um, course. Um, they either do a biography of a famous person, they do descriptions of a substance, of an experiment, they learn how to talk about a graph, they do project work as well, uh, poster presentations, uh, particularly in French, uh, they learn to summarize texts uh, from popular science publications, I dare say. Uh, I think the students uh, by and large, are not able to really cope with um, genuine academic papers at that point. Nevertheless, we do try and um, guide them towards uh, critiquing uh, what they have read and then summarise it. We do prep for residence abroad, so that means how is a foreign university organised, what is the pertinent vocabulary, and how will they actually uh, cope with everyday situations. We also occasionally have guest speakers um, and um, that uh, rounds up the year abroad. So degrees for language or science, very briefly, this is what's on offer. It is not across college, uh, biology, biochemistry and bi biotechnology in short. Sadly, the M sign chemistry with a language is now on its way out, shall we say, we've just had our very final year of intake. Um, sadly, um, there was very little demand, uh, but nevertheless, we still have the students on site. So what do we do there? General language, year in Europe, history and politics in the second year, science and technology uh, with a history aspect. Then some students go abroad in the third year, then uh, the Remaining students do a translation course, uh, which is into English, and then it sw uh, swaps over. And then, of course, all years get tutorials. So extension courses, one week of eight hours, usually in June. Very, very focused input uh, on uh, what do student students really need uh, in terms of survival skills, a bit of a brush up. Um, in case they're a bit worried about what will hit them because different students do different things depending on the university um, and the country they're going to. So then the rationale, what is it? Why are we doing this? We would like to provide discipline specific uh, language for specific purpose input. So we cover all four skills. Uh, we also not just look at functions, but we also look at different genres, of course, of texts. Uh, we include uh, clips from lectures abroad uh, and give the students the opportunity to tune into uh, what they will hear um, in especially the, the the students who actually are able to select uh, lectures uh, as part of their study plan 
um, and to, we'll provide practice opportunities for the students to really put this in, uh, in, into action. And uh, as I said, it's preparation for residents uh, abroad. Some students go to the labs, some do uh, lectures and seminars, and they all need to do projects. So there's projects for the main discipline and there's a project for the language end. Right, so here now, the core aspect of what I looked at. We interviewed the students, the plus points were in terms of uh, feedback, we have a, a student feedback questionnaire, which is college wide. Uh, that was used, that used to be called SOL, the student uh, online learning experience is now called MEQ, the module evaluation questionnaire. And the students liked the low impact in the year abroad classes. Uh, it's only one hour. Uh, it's very light on assessment. And the focus is really on uh, gaining an insight into language for specific purposes across a range of disciplines. Um, so everybody gets a little bit uh, for their own discipline. There's some generic stuff as well, mathematics, um, IT, and um, they, uh, the students appreciate uh, the, both the mix as well as the, the focus. Um, then, of course, they like to be able to um, work within their own discipline. We have many students, and of course, not only from life sciences, but from physics. Um, and um, the physics department is, is a great supporter uh, of the year abroad strand, uh, as is still chemistry, where there is a research abroad uh, degree program. Then, of course, we... Um, uh, the, the students, when they are abroad, so this is now the feedback that came out from the interviews. The returning students said, we like the opportunity to extend our own discipline-related topics. There are certain things we can't do at Imperial. However, at Heidelberg, I was able to then look into, for example, more data analysis. Um, then we really enjoyed the experience of other university disciplines. The um, how do people do science abroad? They weren't the students weren't particularly uh, uh, clear on on what that might mean. But I assume that uh, whilst um, you know certain lab techniques are are universal. There are certain finer points which are very difficult to quantify, very difficult to capture. Uh, that you know, the lab works slightly differently ab abroad, uh, and that is something that they really enjoyed. Uh, they really stressed uh, at several points the challenge of living independently. Now, this is of course not necessarily language uh, related, but is their own personal growth. Uh, opportunity, their uh, way to get out of what one called the comfort zone. And uh, they, as I'll, I will pick up on that in a minute uh, on the kind of slightly more negative side, but it really does challenge the students. Uh, this, despite all the preparation, this is still something that will take the students away from a familiar environment. Uh, now, of course, many students have already, all the students have already made the first step. They've moved from home to uh, a university in, in the vast majority away from their hometown. So they've already uh, made the first step. And then uh, this is uh, the big step abroad to a different culture, um, to a different language environment. This is not uh, to be underestimated, and uh, several students uh, mentioned that. So it was, as they said, a quote, an invaluable experience for personal development, uh, and um, really something that uh, the students, as well as the year abroad the coordinators, uh, emphasized. So what did the students also uh, mention? There was the, the issues of maturity, as well as the flexibility and adaptability to new environments. Uh, that one colleague from physics um, stressed as being a really important feature since it gives 
the students a competitive advantage later on when they come to apply for uh, jobs. And uh, finally, uh, students also uh, stressed the opportunity to establish contacts with um, colleagues in the discipline uh, abroad and, of course, future study. We have uh, certainly had more than one uh, student who then went on to actually do a PhD abroad. Uh, and uh, they are very, very um, pleased to be offered the opportunity to um, continue with doctoral study uh, in, in the country um, where they were currently or at that point are on residence abroad. And it just goes to show uh, that uh, this is an absolutely invaluable uh, step uh, in their career. So next one, what did not go well? Or so well. It requires effort. They all said, yeah, this is not uh, as easy as it looks afterwards. It really does require effort. It can be scary uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, the absence of the usual support network is something that uh, did come up. Uh, they are away from their uh, usual their cohort, first of all, from their circle of friends. However, during the year abroad class, they will have hopefully established a new network of contacts. So, uh, for example, a, a student from biochemistry may then find that a student from uh, physics is also uh, at the same university abroad, uh, so they are not completely without uh, um, people they, they actually know uh, from the home environment. There was language of proficiency concerns. Yes, uh, a couple of students said, mm, we didn't really feel all that comfortable at first in the foreign language, despite having been very well prepared and anecdotal evidence uh, and feedback uh, said that the students felt better prepared than some of their peers from other universities uh, abroad, which was interesting, but nobody gave us any, any further details on that. So this is really just an anecdote. Um, there's an ability difference uh, between the, the, the students whom they will meet uh, abroad, say in Germany, in France, in Switzerland, uh, in Spain, and their English levels and their foreign language levels when they go abroad. And the students really did say, it was a kind of personal experience, we have to really stress, we are here and we'd like to learn the language of the country. Um, yes, you can all speak English very well, and that is very nice. However, can we please continue in the foreign language, which requires more effort on both sides. So um, in one particular, uh, institution, um, the issue of limited choice came up. Now, what do I mean by that? It means that despite the fact that many, many, many uh, lectures and seminars are conducted in English, um, the students may actually be interested in something that is only offered in German, uh, at which point the lack of language skills limits their choice. Uh, and it limits their opportunity to extend their own um, discipline knowledge. So this this is also uh, that was very very interested interesting to hear uh, from a returning student. Now um, we had one particular student who had gone to a, a Swiss university and said yes um, we I had chosen um, many lectures in English. And when I, it came to uh, reading up the support material, that was not in English. So <laughs> language skills were absolutely essential um, and reliance on translation tools uh, may be a disadvantage at that point. So uh, in summary, the better the language skills are, uh, the more beneficial the residents abroad will certainly be. So in summary, uh, I've not kept an eye on time, so I do hope I'm still within uh, my time frame. The students endorsed the language preparation. I have to say that none of the students we spoke to said, oh, I wish I hadn't gone. Uh, 
no, everybody said, this is a wonderful opportunity. This is so important. Uh, this is such a fantastic uh, way to uh, enhance knowledge, skills, transferable skills, and um, for, for personal and professional development. Networking is brilliant. They all said, yes, it's financially manageable with a caveat. Uh, students who go, for example, to uh, universities in Paris may find that uh, accommodation is not cheap, whereas the the kind of the, the difference between, say, a, a London accommodation and a place somewhere in Heidelberg is considerable. Uh, so, but it was all manageable. And nobody said that there were any detriments um, due to the fact that they had to do an additional year. So this is a four year degree. Uh, of course, it has an impact overall. However, uh, nobody felt that that was uh, a problem. Uh, given the uh, uh, opportunities uh, during the residence abroad and uh, effectively the fact that when the students return and then join uh, the job market later on, they can document uh, experience uh, often in, in a laboratory, um, which is as good as having done uh, is a uh, placement. Um, uh, so that... Uh, is are a couple of um, Seoul and MEQ uh, generic generic uh, uh, feedback statements. Uh, they really do like uh, the um, courses we offer. Uh, some students focus more on the fact that it's different from their discipline. Some students do value the fact that we integrate. Uh, discipline knowledge as well. Of course, we are very, very interdisciplinary in the sense that we um, bring students together from across the college. So that in itself is a valuable um, a factor. And they get to discuss um, science and technology in the foreign language with different angles, different perspectives um, uh, come together on uh, through the medium of the foreign language to, to talk about science and technology and engineering. Uh, and uh, that is something the students genuinely value. And uh, I hope um, you found my little snapshot interesting and uh, is a little bit more where we are uh, and uh, our websites um, give the students more information. So if you'd like to have a look at those, um, and there's one short uh, video actually on YouTube, uh, if anybody would like to um, have a listen and a look at that. Uh, it's not that easy to find, but um, I think if you type in uh, residence abroad, Imperial College London, then uh, that clip is about five, six minutes does come up. And that is all. Uh, for from me for today. Thank you very much uh, for uh, listening. Thank you. And uh, I'll just uh, close my screen and stop sharing now. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very, very much.